In the second exercise, we're going to modify our calculator program so that we call a method to perform the calculation. So what I've done is I've started with the calculator as we left it in the last chapter where we had it running in a loop. So what we want to do is create a method called calc. So we're going to move outside of the main program right here. We're going to call this method calc. It's going to take three parameters. We use the same names as we use in the main program. Operand 1, Operand 2, and Op for the operator. And then what we're going to do is we're going to copy the code from our program right here, cut it from the main program, so not really copy but cut, and then paste it in to our method. And then I'll show you how we're going to modify it. First, let's close the method off. And then everywhere you see a console write line, we're going to replace that with a return. So there's two returns. I'm leaving the parentheses there. We don't really need them, but they're not hurting anything. So I'm going to leave them in place. Actually, this error is telling us that we have a problem with not returning a value on all code paths. So what we want to do is, because of that, let's modify the method just a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the return out, replace it with this assignment statement, like so, and then at the very last statement of the method, there we go, like that. So now back to our main program, where we had the if else if statements before, we will replace that with a console write line and a call to calc with operand 1, operand 2, and op. Let's scroll up and make sure our code looks complete without any errors, and it does. So let's test it. 2, 2 plus is 4, yes. 12, 2 minus is 10, that's right. Let's do a little floating point for multiplication. And then finally we'll do one division, and we'll stop. What we achieved by moving the calculator code into a method is that we simplified the main program, made it easier to read, and therefore easier to debug if something's wrong. It's much easier to debug the calculator code in the calc method than it is to try to look at it and figure it out in the main program. So one of the advantages of writing methods is a modularization of the program. By doing this, We've separated the calculator code out so that we can debug it more easily and also we can now use it in another program simply by copying and pasting it into another program or turn it into a library and class that we can import into our program with the using statement. Now that's a topic we can't cover in this course. It's a bit more advanced than what we're going to learn here, but it is something that can be done. So if the calculator is something you want to use in a lot of programs, then you'd simply turn it into a class and then import it with using whenever you need it in other programs. So that wraps up this chapter on writing methods. We're going to look at methods again when we talk about classes in more detail, but now we're ready to move to the next chapter where we talk about one of the first data structures we've seen, the list.